welcome everyone. I take this opportunity to welcome you all to Legal Talks with Mohit Suri, international renowned lawyer. Uh, the topic of today's discussion is company setups in UAE and India. And we have with us a panelist from AAA Consult, AAA Amida Saqqair Consultants, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, they are our partner law firm based in Dubai, and we are doing great work together. Welcome, both of you. Thank you, Jeannie. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much. Welcome, Mr. Thank Ahmed. You, Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Mr. Mohit, for the invitation. Thank You're you. welcome, Mr. Ahmed. Allow me to introduce both the panelists. Uh, Mr. Mohit Suri is the managing partner and legal. He's an international lawyer with an experience of over 20 years. He has worked on various matters with top law firms like Latham and Watkins, Greenberg, Torig, Everschitz, and consulting firms like Deloitte and ENY. His key areas are mergers and acquisitions, international mobility, and taxation. Mr. Suri is a member of the Bar Council of Delhi and a member of Supreme Court Bar Association and has been a union government counsel in the Supreme Court of India since 2014. He has held many powerful positions and is the vice president of India's premier Roshara Club, a social club in India. He has also been the president of Indian Powerlifting Federation and a Commonwealth gold medalist in powerlifting also. He has been featured in media often for his achievements and work in the field of law and sports. Welcome, Mohit. Thank you, Jeannie. Thanks for the kind introduction. You're welcome. I would now like to introduce the other panelist, Mr. Ahmed. Mr. Ahmed is the uh, founder, senior partner, and managing partner of AAA Amira Saket Advocates and Legal Consultants. He has over 24 years of experience in both contentious and non-contentious matters and has worked with some of the largest firms in UAE all across the world for over 10 years. He has experience in criminal law, commercial and corporate law, and litigation. He is a member of the Bar Association in Egypt and advocate before the Supreme Court of Cassation and Administration in Egypt, and also a certified trainer from Emirates Association of Advocates, and the Arab League and Legal Advisors. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to tell you that he is also an author and has authored two books, Encyclopedia of Decrees, Law and Real Estate Litigation, Legislation, and Judgments of Court of Classification of Dubai. And the second book is Criminal Liability of Director in Limited Liability Companies, Comparative Study on UAE and Egyptian Law in 2018. Pleasure to have you with us, sir. Thank you for introduction, and it's my great, great pleasure to be with you. Yes. So I would like to begin today's uh, discussion. So as you all know that people are very keen and looking forward to set up businesses both in India and UAE. So I'd like to begin the uh, discussion by putting the first question across to Mr. Mohit. Uh, firstly, a very basic question. Why does one need a lawyer to set up a company, whether in India or in UAE? I'll ask you to answer for part of India. <laughs> okay, that's a very interesting question, Jeannie. Okay, let me, let me just start by explaining to you. Company formation is not just getting a company rolling or registered uh, online. Or, or something like that, which a lot of online companies do. You need to plan what your rules are, what your roles are, what your company is going to do, what licenses you are gonna need, uh, what approvals you would need, what structure would, would you like to adapt. All that cannot be told to you by uh, someone who's just registering online and doing a, a standard vanilla registration for you. You should come to a lawyer to consult how you would control your resources, how would you best deploy them, and what would make it most useful for you. Uh, so I, I think uh, consulting a lawyer at the foundation stage of your business is the most important and most intelligent thing you can do. It might cost more, but much less than any of the <laughs> of the of the problems that those so-called uh, online experts can cause to you. So uh, I, I would let you question Mr. Ahmed on this. Probably he can shed more light on people in UAE who claim to set up company for 5,000 dirhams and then uh, are, are we are unable to even find them after that. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I agree with Mr. Mohit. And, uh, I can, and I can add uh, on this particular point 
uh, in UAE, uh, uh, the, pro the process to establish a company are really easy. And the UAE government uh, usually facilitate um, establishing companies and uh, to push and to, uh, to give a big push and to, to the investment. However, uh, you still uh, do need to appoint a lawyer when you uh, start to establish your own company, uh, because when you go to DLD, for example, you will find um, several activities for the company. If you are not aware, actually, what kind of activity you wish to, to add or to choose in the beginning, you are complicated the whole process. This is number one. Number two, you are making more charges, unnecessary charges to yourself. Number three, when you add more activity to your company, which are not necessary in the beginning, you are actually, uh, the government will ask you for more requirements. And this is make the process of uh, establishing company more long and you're going to lose money and you're going to uh, waste time while you can avoid all of this, if you consult a lawyer who can, uh, uh, in one advice, he can tell you, this is a legal activity, this is the economic activity you needed for the time being to start your own business. Then later, later stage, you can add something, you can remove something else. Correct. Okay, well said. Um, so everybody wants to look at being a pastures and expand their Business. So I would like to ask uh, the next question to you, Mr. Mohit. What are the advantages of doing business or setting up a company in India, especially for uh, you know people from UAE or foreign nationals? See, India and UAE, as UAE is the flavor of this week, uh, are very, very, uh, what should I say, close jurisdictions to each other. Majority of the population in UAE is Indian. Most of the businesses in UAE are Indian. So we can expect a lot of uh, UAE companies to also set up business in India. With the COVID uh, actually uh, wreaking a lot of havoc, it becomes very important for companies to enter the market where they want to cater their businesses to. India is a very huge market. And uh, if a lot of UAE companies want to sell or want to do their manufacturing here. And I think uh, it would make great sense for them to come in and tap India as a future potential uh, economic hub, especially with the, with the growth rate that is expected in the, next, uh, in the coming years. I think uh, India would be a great jurisdiction for UAE. Plus with the reciprocating agreement already signed between India and UAE, I think it would be much easier for the UAE businesses to set up in India because they can execute their contracts in UAE and enforce them in India now. So it becomes much more, uh, much more viable for them compared to even other countries. Though even other countries would be looking at India because they want to hedge their, uh, their, their uh, exposure to China. But UAE has a special relationship, as I said, and India would give the best possible opportunity that is to the nationals of United, uh, United Arab Emirates who want to set up businesses in India or companies in India. Thank you. I think you can well explain, uh, Mr. Mohit. Uh, I would like to give the same question to Mr. Ahmed. What are the advantages of doing business in UAE and a company set up in UAE? Um, as I said, uh, UAE government is a st uh, strongly support uh, investment in UAE. And they are doing that uh, in a very wise uh, strategy. So they started with uh, new rules, completely can be uh, not co in comparison with GCC uh, countries. For example, they started with a golden visa to the investors, to, uh, to the people who are uh, creative, uh, which is a big step. And after that, they even offer to get the UAE citizenship, which uh, uh, will uh, be the first time ever in GCC country or the Arab country who can give such an opportunity to the people. And uh, every few months, every, every couple, of three, couple of months or three months, we are having new regulation 
very supportive to investors. And regarding to the Indian nationalities here, uh, there are uh, very successful uh, examples happen for uh, people who start uh, investing in UAE or starting even to work and they uh, achieve a, a huge or a fantastic uh, success stories and they become billionaires. And by the way, for the Indian nationalities, they are considering the uh, one of the biggest uh, communities and biggest uh, uh, people here in UAE. And uh, you will find everything like, I think similar to India. So you will not find big differences between India and UAE in many things. And the business for sure, uh, there are a uh, huge opportunity and there are very good infrastructures uh, and there are internet, there are tools, there are everything and the government and the, their highness are pushing that very smartly and in a, in, a, in a long term basis and in a short term basis as well. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Mohit, I believe you wanted to add something to this. No, it's fine. Uh, what Mr. Ahmed has said is, is very right. Uh, but again, what I would like to add is, uh, I would like to differ with Mr. Ahmed because I think <laughs> slightly though, that one thing which UAE has, which is much faster than India, that is the legal system. So if you <laughs> do it as... My next question actually was about that. <laughs> see, see, that is the, because he was saying that... Uh, India, India and UAE are very similar. So I wanted to just tell the, the people who joined in that it is very similar when it comes to people, but it is very different when it comes to rules and the laws. So I would let you ask the next question, Jeannie, because uh, we would need to go through all the questions from viewers also. My, okay, my next question actually is this only that what is the process of incorporation of a company in India? And as you were talking about the laws and rules, if you could explain it to our viewers, because we, as Mr. Ahmed also said, there are a lot of people who are interested from UAE also to set up businesses and expand in India. See, the scenario is that now the setup of companies in India has become very simple. With the online, the online system, I think you just need one form to get your DIN and you to get uh, even your tax numbers and other things. And it can be really, really, really fast. But for a foreigner, it is still not very fast. Why? Because in India, you need one resident director who is residing in India. And so that is, again, like a, a big drawback because a foreigner who wants to set up a company in India would need one person who is one of the directors has to be Indian. So that is a drawback. Then all the documents that have to be submitted at the ROC or submitted online also have to be apostilled, which is kind of, I think uh, it might not be the easiest of things to do for a businessman because he has uh, so many things to cater to. So when they want to set up companies, these are two things which I think uh, we will need to change, especially the apostille can change. And so can the rule that one of the directors has to be permanently resident in India. So I think, I think these are things which India can make better to attract more capital, especially from UAE, because they would be keen to invest in India if these things go away. Uh, so the process is mainly very smooth and online. Just these two things, I think, are uh, are an issue. You need uh, digital signatures, which is a simple requirement. Thereafter, you apply. You will need to tell us the main uh, main uh, reason for which you want to set up your company, the main object of the company, and the proposed names. And that's probably it. And after that, there are there are procedural things which we will need to know that how your internal uh, for your memorandum and your articles that what you want to deal with and how you want to run your company. So all that has to be done by a lawyer or somebody who is aware of all this. So we can help you out with all that. So this is the basic procedure for India. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, so as they say, leave it to the lawyer, he knows the best. <laughs> My next question is for Mr. Abdul. Uh, sorry, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, Mr. Ahmed, what is the difference between a free zone and a mainland company set up in Dubai? A lot of people have uh, still a lot of unclarity related to this. Yeah, um, 
Actually, uh, the, the, um, I can say the main differences between uh, uh, the main, uh, to establish a company in free zone and in the mainland is the jurisdictions of each of them. If you decided, uh, if you decide to establish a company in the free zone, uh, it is a, 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 almost same process, but you just have one single obligation, which is you cannot do the business inside UAE. So if you decided to establish a, a free zone company, you can do whatever activity you wish according to your commercial activity, but it should be uh, like uh, from you, uh, from this company uh, all over the world. You cannot get your, uh, let's say, uh, staff, or uh, let, you cannot do a commercial activity inside UAE. If you're going to do it inside UAE, it has to be throwing a company uh, established in the mainland. But the process almost same. And by the way, the cost, it's not now a big difference between establishing a company in the mainland and free zone as well, especially after the last uh, uh, decrease happened to let the sponsorship of uh, a company LLC to be 100% for the foreigner. So you don't have any obligation nowadays, according to the last decree, uh, to, to have another sponsor of local sponsor or Emirati sponsor with an amount of 51%. So uh, if you decided to do some a commercial activity inside UAE, you have to go to establish a company in the mainland. Mainland. Thank you. Okay. All right. So uh, as you just mentioned that, uh, as for, uh, I think you're referring to the new company formation law, where full ownership is possible and there is no longer a need for a local partner. Right, Mr. Ahmed? So, uh, Mohit, I would like to ask you, will this um, encourage people who are looking forward to spread their wings across UAE? And how much impactful do you think this would be? Jeannie, this would surely encourage people to invest in UAE. One, uh, a lot of people have been very apprehensive about this 51% uh, ownership by the local, even though you have foolproof agreements, but you never know when somebody, uh, you know, uh, can things can go wrong. And they have gone wrong for many people. So people are very reluctant when it comes to uh, giving the 51% ownership to the locals. Once that is gone, uh, people because Indians have already been going to the UAE, have been traveling and feel at home in Dubai. I think there would be a huge spurt in uh, investment going out from India to the UAE. One, because it's a very smooth financial system. Two, because it's a very smooth legal system. And three, that as per what my experience has been in UAE, amongst all the Arab countries, it has one of the most advanced legal and financial systems in that whole region. So that is a big catalyst for anybody looking at uh, probably going international or, or establishing their business in another place. So I think UAE is going to gain drastically. Thank you. Very well said, Mr. Mohit. Uh, I would also like to ask Mr. Ahmed that uh, have you seen an increase? Have you seen an increase from you know India and uh, people from India looking forward to this as uh, as, as per the change in this uh, company formation? Yeah, of course. And uh, I have a comments regarding to what Mr. Mohit said uh, regarding to uh, the decision or the decrease of getting one hundred percent ownership of. Uh, for the foreigner investors who can establish a company without Emirati sponsor was 51%. That is actually, it wasn't uh, an easy decision to, uh, to be taking. And I can say uh, it's uh, a brave and a smart decision because this is the first time for the first time in the GCC country, such a decision had uh, uh, to be taken like that. And this is by the way, this decision, it gives you uh, an indication that the economy in UAE are uh, very uh, well established and uh, they have self-confident to uh, open the way and uh, open the doors 
for all the investors to come to establish their companies without any kind of limitation or without any kind of restriction, of course. So it's, it was very smart and it's a smart decision, especially the time also uh, of this decision, it's actually very good because after COVID-19, uh, the uh, global economy uh, are down and each country would like to uh, recover and would like to take its share uh, of the economy and recovering on something like that. So UAE government takes this decision very wisely and this is gives a big push to everybody because now you can come and you can establish your own company and you can uh, get your uh, your money and do whatever you need according to the legal system which is also very advantage if we if i may say uh, we are we have now miss jenny we have a smart government yani uh, according to his highness uh, mohammed bin rashid who uh, i think two years he said we don't want to use paper and now uh, this uh, vision it's been clear even the notary public, we just have three three days of three days ago only. It's now becomes totally electronically. So you don't have paper, you don't have something to sign, you don't have a stamp like the old-fashioned uh, issues. You can do everything throwing your uh, application, apps, uh, Emirates uh, ID electronically. So everything is very easy. Starting from paying pill to do the legal work, and even for our uh, law, uh, for our legal work, actually, we are now attending hearing online. We are submitting uh, our application uh, or our draft online. We are meeting judge uh, judges, and we are talking to to them online. So it's really a very advantage uh, uh, legal system, which giving very good push. Thank you so much. That's very nice to know. Uh, Mr. Mohit, would you like to add to this? Because you also have been, um, you know, attending hearings uh, digitally and uh, a lot of these things have been happening in the Indian legal system as well. Would you please like to uh, share your experience about this? See, Jeannie, this is a phenomenon which is around the world. But actually, the litigation system has suffered drastically around the world because of COVID. The time required for a judgment has gone up drastically. The backlog of cases is huge in India and in other places around the world because we do um, a lot of litigation around the world. But as Mr. Ahmed said, COVID-19 is a big, uh, big opportunity. Why I say that? A lot of people are restarting or starting their businesses afresh or have their businesses, uh, their uh, traditional businesses have suffered. So they can actually, uh, this is the time when they, they can think of exploring international markets, think of looking at expanding, think of looking at moving to a jurisdiction, which will give them a more, uh, say, business-friendly uh, uh, environment so that they can grow without the fear of the next pandemic. They, we all have seen this, that there are certain areas which have handled the pandemic better than the others. So UAE being one of them. So I think uh, this pandemic would lead uh, to a lot of people thinking of UAE, not just in India, but around the world. So uh, as far as the legal system is concerned, we would discuss uh, in our next talk, uh, which is something which actually uh, really attracts me to this jurisdiction. Uh, with with the common law courts and and arbitrations and and other things, so but since we are running out of time, I would not like to talk too much about this, and I would let you and Mr. Ahmed uh, do the closing remarks. And if any any of our uh, participants, because today we had over forty participants, because I had to actually uh, remove a couple of them so that the the remaining from the queue could come in, because I had limited the number of participants to forty. So uh, I would let them ask us if they have any queries. I would request them to just unmute and ask us if they want. And uh, I would thank Mr. Ahmed for being so kind and giving us uh, his generous time today. And I would thank you for hosting this show. And I would give the mic to you and Mr. Ahmed to, uh, and then for any questions if we have. 
Uh, thank you, Mohit. Uh, before I move the board of thanks, I'd like to ask if any of our guests uh, would like to ask any questions, if you could please unmute yourself and ask the question. So I think most of them are clear about what both of you said. So, uh, Mr. Ahmed, <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Ahmed, I would like to thank you and I uh, thank your um, firm for partnering with us also and for being a part of this uh, legal talks. And to all the viewers, I extend a word of thanks and uh, Mr. Mohit also. And please join us every week for this. And uh, you can follow us on our social handles. The recording of the same would be available on our YouTube channel also. And, and also on Triple A's uh, social handles. Yeah, of course, on Triple A's, Triple A Amish Huggles also. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And Mr. Ahmed, uh, thank you so much. Um, I give the mic to you to uh, express uh, and uh, to say a few words. Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, it would be uh, always uh, uh, my pleasure to uh, participate with you in future webinar. And uh, welcome to AAA Amira Sakhra Advocates in UEE and welcome to UEE as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Pleasure hosting you both and pleasure having all the audience. Uh, as I said, please check us out on our social handles and follow us for uh, more advice. Mm -hmm. We will have the next topic would be recoveries and reciprocatory, reciprocating territory, India and UAE. It's going to be a very interesting and very, very informative topic. And I would request all the viewers to please join us again. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you again. Thank you very much Thank for you. being there. All of you joined us. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thanks.